Good morning and it's wonderful to be back with you again online at the beginning of this um, week of prayer for Christian unity. Now you may wonder where we are today and, and what this big board behind me is all about. Well all will be revealed uh, but let's open our worship with a prayer. Let us pray. Jesus prayed that we would all be one. Lord, we pray for the church, which is one in the greatness of your love, but too often divided by the weakness of our own. May we be less focused on the things that divide and more concerned with those we hold in common, recognising the love that enfolds us all. May we wear no label, save Christ alone. To him be the glory forever and ever, in and through every expression of his church. Amen. Amen. And Mark is now going to read to us a passage from John's Gospel in which Jesus prays for unity. So a reading from John chapter 17. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. For them I sanctify myself, that they too may be truly sanctified. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you have sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thank you. May I speak in the name of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, the last time uh, we were with you, we were in the kitchen for the Christingle service. And today we are here in um, our painting studio. And that, that, I think, sounds grander, rather grander than it really is. In the summer, this is part of the area uh, that, we, um, that, that, that we use for the reception for, for our guests. But in the winter, Mark and I both dabble in art and um, it then houses canvases and paints and easels uh, and so on. And I was, <coughs> excuse me, I was in here over Christmas dabbling um, and my eyes light, alighted upon this board in the corner. And this is a board that, a colour board that Mark made uh, quite a few years ago now. And it's showing many of the different hues uh, that have been created, not all of them by any means, but many of the different hues uh, that, that are possible. Uh, and it made me think, this board made me think that this is reminiscent of, um, of our Christian faith um, and, and all the many shades of Christianity that exist across the world, from a Catholic high mass in, in a cathedral to, um, to worship of the Lord in an African shack with an earth floor and chickens running between the legs of the, of the congregation. That was one of the most memorable and powerful um, services that I've ever been to. And of course there's a huge variety within denominations. The Church of England um, is often said to be a broad church holding intention, a wide variety of expressions of our faith. And if we look again at these many shades uh, on the colour board, there's one thing that they, they all have in common. They're all created from the same three colours, with the addition of black and white. They're all created from the three primary colours, red, yellow and blue. Um, with the three primary colours, we can create every colour of the rainbow. So, what do we who profess the Christian faith have in common? What's the thread that unites us? Well, it's not three colours. 
it's three persons. Um, everyone who, um, every Christian affirms their faith in God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And this is expressed never more clearly than in baptism. At the end of Matthew's Gospel, Jesus tells his disciples, Go and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teach them to obey the commandments. Uh, uh, that I have to teach them to obey everything that I have commanded you. Jesus came to bring a new life, a new way of being, to bring in a new social order built not on worldly values but on the values of God's kingdom. Justice, freedom, dignity for all, love and peace, timeless values for every age. We are baptised into this new community that cuts right across nationality, culture, race uh, and age. Our values are realigned with the values of God's kingdom and those values hold no matter who we are or where we come from. And the Holy Spirit enables us to live out those values, sustains us in this new life because we can't do it alone. Of course, being human, we inevitably fall short. We choose not to live as Jesus commanded. And this can and often does result in disunity. St Paul spent a lot of time addressing this problem in the very early church. The fledgling church in Corinth was experiencing serious divisions and dissensions which is hardly surprising as the early church attracted people from all nationalities, all cultures, all backgrounds, as it does today. But today we've had centuries to come to understand what's required of us as Christians. In the first chapter of Corinthians, Paul is countering the factions that were arising, some declaring themselves to be followers of him, some declaring themselves to be followers of Peter. Um, but St Paul says, you were not baptised into me and you weren't baptised into Peter. You were baptised into Christ. I wasn't crucified for you. Peter wasn't crucified for you. Christ was crucified for you. And he's pleading for unity. And he pleads again in chapter 12, where he uses the analogy um, of the body. He says we're all baptised into one body, all parts of the same body. And each part is different, but each has its place and its work to do in order to make the body work, in order to make it viable. Paul is acknowledging our differences. He's not calling for uniformity. What a boring place the world would be. He's calling for unity, and unity is achieved through love. Chapter 13 uh, of Corinthians is known as St Paul's great hymn of love. He tells the church in Corinth how to heal these divisions. They must love one another. And he proceeds to tell them how. And the love St Paul describes isn't some flowery, sentimental love. Far from it. It's busy. It's active. It's hard working. It's always finding ways to express itself. It's seen in patience, in kindness, in humility, forgiveness, not bearing grudges, selflessness. Love is the work of the Holy Spirit. Love is a fruit of the Spirit. And love leads to unity. So Paul is restating Jesus' command to love one another as I have loved you. God's creation isn't marked by uniformity, but by diversity, not just in the plant and animal kingdom. I don't know if you've seen the latest um, offering from Sir David Attenborough, The Green Planet. It's that God's creation in all its diversity is, 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 is almost unbelievable.
It's amazing. And this diversity is seen in God's human creation. As wildly different as we are from each other, we are all made in the image of God. And Jesus prays that we will all be one in order that that community, the church that Jesus leaves behind to make known his truth, will be effective in doing that. And to be effective, it must be credible. Jesus prayed that we would be one so that people would believe in him. It's been said that disunity lies in talking about what we believe. Unity lies in talking about who we believe in. Jesus says, love one another as I have loved you. And by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples. So may all who profess the Christian faith live it in love for God and for one another, in unity. Amen. Amen. So now may we offer our prayers for the world. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for this opportunity to worship together. We thank you for discoveries and technologies and science that makes it possible. As we worship together, we recognise the wider fellowship of which we are part. And we celebrate the faith that we share. United in that faith, we ask your blessing, Lord, on your church throughout the world. We pray for the church in lots of places that is persecuted. We ask your protection and strength for those people who risk their lives to worship you. Who risk their lives in declaring you to be Lord of all. In the strength of unity, may we be an effective witness to your love and saving power. We remember especially those places where the church is reaching out to the poor and those on the margins of society. We ask you to give courage to and guide and protect all who stand against injustice and oppression. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for all your blessings to us. And we remember those who have nothing. We remember the people of Yemen and Afghanistan, where continuing conflict has brought famine and great suffering in its wake. We pray for the women of Afghanistan especially the young women who have known nothing but Western freedoms, who are now deprived of education, forced into marriages. Bless the aid that has been donated to these countries in need. And we pray that they will quickly receive the food and the medicines that they so desperately need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we thank you for our easy and free access to health care and medicine. We thank you for the vaccines. And we give thanks for all who work in the healing ministry. We pray for doctors and nurses those who work in the emergency services. And we remember before you friends and loved ones who are ill at this time. And we pray especially for those who are no longer able to look after themselves. Lord, touch with your generous love all who are suffering. And bless everything 
being done for their recovery, we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give comfort and strength to the bereaved. We remember all our loved ones departed, and we look forward in faith and hope to the time when we can be at home with them and you in your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Try in God, we come before you as one church, one body, united in one Father, one Spirit, and one Christ Jesus, in whose name we humbly offer these prayers. Amen. Amen. And now we say together the prayer that our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, Our Father, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come. Thy, thy will, will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And our closing prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you prayed to the Father that all should be one. Send your Holy Spirit upon all who bear your name and seek to serve you. Strengthen our faith in you and lead us to love one another in humility. May we who have been reborn in one baptism be united in one faith under one shepherd. Amen. Amen. Well, it's been great to be back with you again for the first time this new year. Um, and I think we'll be back in two weeks' time for our online Candlemas service. So until then, a final blessing. The Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, Teach us to walk in his way more trustfully, to accept his truth more faithfully, and to share his life more lovingly. That by the power of the Holy Spirit we may come as one family to the kingdom of the Father. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and those you love on this day and always. Amen. Amen. All the room was hushed and still And where the bowl was filled He stood
joy.